around 2014, I was working with a good buddy of mine who's Australian, and he was in he was in the states for a few years, you know, and he'd work at our shop a bunch. And we, I don't know, we got talking about something. Maybe 24 Hours of Le Mans was coming on, and you know, I was talking about how you know, since I'd lived in New York, like we hadn't done any you know cool automotive things, like we you know, there's no racetracks, blah blah blah. And he's like, well, you know, have you uh, have you heard of the 24 Hours of Lemons? I was like, no, what is that? And he's like, well. It's like the 24 hours of Le Mans, but you can only spend $500 on your car. I was like, sold, let's do it right now. Turns out $500 of your car is the least of your worries in Lemons. And at the time I had just moved the shop. I had had to buy out three of my partners. I had no money. My wife is pregnant. I'm not going racing. My brother, who's our CFO, put his foot down. He's like, you are not doing this right now. I was like, all right, but now the wheels are spinning in my head and this is, this is a thing that's going to happen in the future. Fast forward a couple years and my son is born and he, as a baby, is, you know, we think he's colicky, he's at doctors a bunch, he doesn't ever sleep, and three months into his life, his pediatrician's like, you know, his head's growing kind of big. It's probably nothing, you know, just go get it checked out. So we end up at NYU in the neurology department and they kind of, you know, take a look at him. He's like, you know, he's earned an MRI. Don't panic. Don't start Googling things is what they tell you, which is good advice. I didn't take it. So I'm like, oh, something's wrong with him. Clearly something's wrong. You know, I'm, I'm all over the internet. And it turns out he had a brain condition when he was born that we didn't catch called hydrocephalus. And it's an imbalance of fluid. It happens for a number of different reasons. There's a number of different ways it affects people. Dean, my son, doesn't absorb all the cerebral spinal fluid that his brain makes. So slowly, his head started to get bigger because his brain was being squished into the side of his head. And he ended up having three brain surgeries within two months. He got what's called a shunt, and that's basically a tube with a titanium valve that runs it goes through his brain into the ventricles, which is where everybody's brain puts all the fluid it makes, and it runs a tube down to his abdomen, and so when the pressure builds up in his head, the valve goes off, it drains, it saves people's lives. But it is still a very mechanical way to deal with a medical problem, but it's where we are technologically, obviously. There's a lot of research going on for drugs now, but... You know, it was one of these things that I had heard the word, but knew nothing about it. And I found that there's not a lot of research going on that you would think, especially for the human brain. So my wife and I got involved after, you know, after his third surgery, he was okay. He was stabilized for a few months. He started sleeping. We started sleeping. Everybody became sane again. We started working with the Hydrocephalus Association because they are the largest private funder of hydrocephalus research in the world. And they... Literally, I mean, they have a full-time staff that is, like, it's literally their job to go out and, you know, work with government officials, you know, get the Department of Health to actually put some reasonable amount of funding, because it's, it's less than a dollar per person that gets put into funding, or at least when, when Dean was born, it was. It's gotten a little bit better, and so we wanted to get involved and do, you know, stuff, and we started going, doing the walks, and you know, raising money and stuff. And like, we just kind of realized like, you know, everybody that we're always talking to about it is either affected by it or has a family member affected by it or they're a neurosurgeon. So you're really always talking to people who are already know what the deal is. So I was like, we got to figure out a way, you know, to, to really get out there. And, you know, working in the film industry, I was like, well, we could make a documentary, you know, we could do something and that all, you know, it all kind of sounded, well, it's the same thing everybody does for everything. And then I remembered 24 hours of lemons. And I told my partner, I was like, Julia needs a new car. This is my wife. We're going to take her 2002 minivan that has driven Dean to all of his brain surgeries. And we are going to turn it into a legit race car. And it is going to attract more attention than any other car out there because it is a minivan on a racetrack. And for the first time, everybody else went, that's a pretty good idea. And as soon as I hear that, that's it. So I don't tell my wife this at first. She gets a new car. The next day she wakes up, the minivan's gone. And she's, what happened? Where did, you know, we lived in Brooklyn at the time. Did it get stolen? I'm like, no one stole the minivan. It's a 2002 Odyssey. No one wants that. I send her a picture. I've already got the rear gutted. 
and we start going to work on this thing. And obviously, 24 Hours and Lemons has a $500. Everything that would make it a fast car is within that $500. And I took it very, very seriously for the first race because I didn't, you know, you get penalty laps. The judges tell you, you're going to fail. We're going to not let you race. You're going to get a million penalty laps if you bring, so if you break the rules. Show us all your documentation. I find out at the first race, they really don't care. They're just... Okay, you spent this. They gave us a few penalty laps. We get into the whole process and it starts to become like a thing. The very first race we are like mobbed. Like every we didn't know what we were doing. We're newbies, so we're like in the back of the paddock and every everybody wants to know what's going on with the minivan. What's going what is this hydrocephalus association? Like I couldn't believe it. The hydrocephalus association calls me and is like, "Hey, bring this van now to the to the walks. We want to have the kids sit in the van. And all of a sudden I'm like, well, this is now a thing. Like we have to, we have to go be serious. So I call 24 hours of lemons. I call judge Phil and I'm like, Hey, like, what do you think if we bring this van back? Like, you know, what can I spend money on? He's like, I don't care what you spend on that thing. It's a minivan. He's like, you're not going to do anything that's cheating with a minivan. So I, Megan racing makes coilovers for it. We fully do the suspension. We blow our engine at the second race, fully built. Board, custom internals, everything that could make this thing the fastest minivan it could possibly be. And we start racing this thing and we start, you know, I take it to NASA events now. We do autocross with it, which is hilarious, but it's actually pretty quick. We start taking it around to all of these different charity, uh, you know, walks, the, you know, events for the Hydrocephalus Association. And it's really now come down to what's always the next thing. And at every race we're doing, you know, we're raising, you know, five, sometimes $10,000 just, you know, from people like, we're just like, Hey, we're racing this weekend. Here's the link. And it's, it's really been a big thing for people who are, you know, into cars, into the, into automotive, into racing no idea what hydrocephalus is. And it finally was like, okay, I feel like now we're doing something and we're getting the word out. I called it, I called our congressman. I wanted to get him into the race car, wouldn't do it. But it, it was at least an excuse to be like, hey, what do you think about this? You should know about this. And it's obviously not our fault, but through working with them, you know, every state now has proclaimed September Hydrocephalus Awareness Month. And that's, you know, official on the books. We've got a lot more research, uh, you know, new drugs are now being developed. And, you know, for that little part, like, I feel like we're doing something, you know, and like helping people, but like, you know, going to the charity events, going to the watch, letting the kids sit in that thing. Cause it's just so people don't even know what to do about it. Like it's a caged out minivan, like with a arrow and what this huge wing on the back like what what are you doing what is this thing everyone always wants to know the story and as you know the story the story is everything if you got a charity you need to raise awareness for i highly recommend you get yourself a 2002 honda odyssey and just go race it Private party transactions are scary, but Caramel is the perfect tool to keep everyone safe. Once you've worked out your deal, Caramel comes in to work out all the paperwork, do the DMV paperwork no matter what state you're in, verify everybody's identity, and even manage the transfer of the money. So visit Drive Caramel now or the link in the description below, and they'll make your transaction run faster, safer, and more smoothly than any private party deal deserves to be. And for a limited time, Caramel is free to both buy and sellers. With Caramel, I do the shrewd negotiation, they do the hard part.